The story begins in the desolate landscape of a destroyed world, where lifeless creatures are scattered about. The God of Destruction yelled, Behold, last of humanity, victory is mine, with triumph-etched expression on his face. His enormous sword pierced our protagonist with a thunderous blow, causing him to cough in pain and spill blood from his lips. He looked fixedly at the Demon King while relying heavily on his reliable sword, fully aware that he represented humanity's last hope. It was a world devoid of hope. Since the humans' devastating defeat in the war against the demons a year earlier, even though the majority of humanity had been brutally murdered, the conflict's echoes persisted. Those who were able to survive were subjected to a fate worse than death. They were reduced to nothing more than vessels used in the birth of monstrous creatures, and their minds were stripped of all autonomy. Our protagonist continued to fight alone against insurmountable odds as the only resistance army survivor in this gloomy reality. Tartarus, the god of obliteration and leader of evil spirits, commented with a sprinkle of joke in his voice, You are by all accounts in desolation. Permit me to offer some break. Tartarus stated, his voice darkly amused, I've extended your lifespan just enough for us to engage in a brief conversation. He continued, Ah, Zephyr, the name rings a bell. As he got closer to Zephyr, you were the first person to challenge me so relentlessly, and you've been a persistent annoyance. Your persistence is to be sure vital, conceded Tartarus, recognizing Breeze's flexibility. It is common knowledge that no fool would persist in a losing cause. But those who give in to fear and give up without fighting are nothing but weak, Tartarus said with contempt, his disdain for weakness evident. I despise weak competitors. Their absence of resolve disturbs me. Considering that you've ascended as the zenith of your species, you should appreciate my opinions, he commented, noticing Breeze's fatigued state. Permit me to make an offer, Tartarus continued, concentrating on Zephyr. Me too. He offered Zephyr an unprecedented offer of power and conquest, promising, we shall together transcend this insignificant realm and conquer everything, even the domain of the gods. Do you really mean it? Is it really possible for me to support your cause? Asked Breeze, his voice loaded down with incredulity and a touch of interest. Certainly, Tartarus smiled, confirming his offer with a dark sense of amusement. That's quite the proposition, Zephyr jokingly responded. However, he was aware, deep down, of the extent of his wounds from the recent battle. He was fully aware that his body couldn't be fixed and that recovery was out of the question. Zephyr realized that Tartarus had ulterior motives that were hidden behind the apparent offer. It was not a genuine offer. Tartarus intended to observe Bree's forlorn acquiescence. He wanted to see Zephyr, the person who had lost everything, beg for his life from an adversary who had taken everything away from him. As Breeze connected towards Tartarus, a memory streaked through his psyche, a memory of a denounced lady him for his exorbitant hostility and obscenity. She had cast a spell on him that appeared to be absurd in response to his stubbornness after warning him against his reckless behavior. She had stated, A tremendous burst of power from another dimension will obliterate me if I perform a certain action with my hand. Zephyr also made the decision to unleash his response to the Demon Lord's offer at that crucial moment when he was facing Tartarus. To your proposal, Tartarus, Lord of Demons, I will respond as follows. Screw you. Breeze expressed disobediently. He thought he had caught Tartarus off guard in an energy explosion, but the God of Destruction was also engulfed in the blast. Zephyr, you son of a... How dare you humiliate me like this, you pathetic human! Echoed the furious scream of Tartarus. Zephyr's long-fought battle appeared to come to an end in that cataclysmic moment. It appeared as though his efforts had failed to avenge his loved ones and save humanity from extinction. A somber conclusion to his valiant struggle was anticipated, or so it ought to have appeared. Zephyr felt his hand twitch as he lay on the ground, amazed to find himself still alive. What's going on? He contemplated in dismay. He was certain that he had just passed away. When he noticed that his wounds had miraculously healed, a wave of confusion washed over him. When he ran his fingers over his armor, he noticed that the plates had been replaced and looked like they had never been damaged. Where are you? Zephyr asked out loud because he was unsure of the answer. As he studied his environmental factors, 
he saw images suggestive of the divine beings. Is this a temple of some kind? He was perplexed by the unfamiliar architecture around him and wondered. He had never seen anything like this before in a temple. Pondering his conditions, Breeze induced. This should be eternity, the domain of the hidden world. He came to the realization, which added to his predicament's surreal quality. He concluded that he had entered the realm of the gods or their enigmatic underworld due to the combination of healed wounds, clean armor, and an otherworldly atmosphere. This is not the dark side. In the glistening light, a voice echoed. It's the deepest level of the pantheon where the gods live. A beautiful blonde woman with four perfectly white wings that hung from her back and made her look like an angel suddenly appeared. Surprised, Zephyr instinctively reached for his sword but was unable to summon it. The realization temporarily paralyzed him, so he paused. The calm angelic figure reassured Zephyr, do not be alarmed. I am the God's messenger. Mercedes is my name. I am a member of the elite angelic ranks. Her ethereal presence and quiet disposition controlled the pressure that had held Breeze. As she introduced herself as a herald representing the divine beings that were residing within the inner sanctum of the Pantheon, he looked at her, trying to make sense of the absurdity of the situation. Mercedes went on to say, you're already dead. His spirit would typically swiftly travel to the underworld. However, the Triumvirate of Supreme Gods has made an unprecedented decision to transport him back in time at the insistence of numerous deities. Surprised, Zephyr asked, what do you mean? The angel went on to say that Zephyr would be taken back to the past with all of his memories and consciousness intact. It was a chance for him to modify the result of previous occasions, to change the finish of his story. But there was a catch. Only his memories would survive this journey through time. His physical prowess, acquired skills, and prowess would not return to their previous levels. Mercedes reassured him by stating that Zephyr, regarded as the most powerful human, was capable of rapidly regaining his lost abilities and strengths in spite of this limitation. She expressed optimism that he would quickly regain his previous skill and overcome this obstacle. Zephyr's thoughts were clouded by doubts as he considered his situation. He considered whether this experience was a simple dream or a deception created by Tartarus. It could have been a dream or a sign of his impending death. Breathing out profoundly, he voiced his vulnerability, provoking the holy messenger to scrutinize the purpose for giving him another opportunity. Why provide me with this opportunity? In the midst of the perplexing circumstances, Zephyr inquired with skepticism. The angel said, I understand your skepticism, sensing his hesitation. You want evidence. But let's say I share your belief. What do you anticipate from me? Everything has a price attached to it. Your offer of a second chance does not come from pure kindness, does it? Bree's examining question expected to uncover the basic intentions behind the help from above. Thinking that there were ulterior thought processes driving the divine being's activities, he held on to a doubt that this additional opportunity was not a magnanimous gift, yet rather a way to satisfy the divine being's own cravings. People all over the country prayed fervently for help as the God of Destruction launched his invasion and the massacre began. Be that as it may, the divine beings insensitively got some distance from their requests. They disregarded the prayers and any additional offerings made by the desperate populace. They even deprived the priests of their divine power, which they had been borrowing to defend against the impending doom, in an act of betrayal. The once powerful human army collapsed almost immediately, unable to heal or defend themselves. In their cold calculation, the gods had decided that their realm had nothing more to offer. They cruelly abandoned the mortals with this verdict, leaving them to face extinction on their own. It was shocking to learn that these celestial beings, who were once revered and worshipped, were nothing more than indifferent beings who were unwilling to provide assistance without payment. Their surrender left an unpleasant taste, as mankind understood that the divine beings could never give their help without anticipating something consequently. Mercedes responded to Zephyr's inquiry, very well. Give the gods themselves permission to explain, they desire something more captivating, she went on to say. Mercedes' response surprised Zephyr. She went on to say that some gods had been watching him and were disappointed to have seen him die. 
It was a phenomenal unique case for a human confronted with impending passing to show such faithful assurance as late as possible. The divine beings had been significantly dazzled by Bree's unrivaled flexibility in fighting against the tireless satanic powers for a stunning five years. Their interest had been piqued by his unwavering struggle. Zephyr was moved by Mercedes's words. She went on to say that many gods had been saddened to see him leave the mortal world so soon. She went into detail about how Zephyr seemed to have a lucky break as the end got closer. Unbeknownst to him, the divine beings had broadened their help, regardless of the karmic cost they caused in doing as such. However, Zephyr unleashed a beam of intense blue aura toward the angel before Mercedes could finish her sentence. Fools! Bree's voice resounded with fierceness. Did you find our struggle amusing? As he confronted them, his rage flared to the brim. Merely for your amusement, watching us fight so hard for our lives? His clenched hands held, a brilliant blue air radiating from his grip. Is that why we battled? To be your diversion. Is that all you consider our worth? Bree's accusatory words rang out, loaded up with dissatisfaction and disdain. Mercedes summoned a massive foot that struck Zephyr and brought him to his knees. Show some regard. The divine beings are noticing, she rebuked as she moved toward Breeze. Mercedes sought to correct his misconception by leaning in. You seem to have misunderstood, she began in a calm and firm voice. The gods only found you to be intriguing. As a species, humans have never piqued their interest. If you want anything from them, they want proof of your worth. She went on to emphasize the idea that neither an individual nor an entire species can receive anything for free in this world. Zephyr said, there is another trying to find a better explanation for his sudden resurrection. I've had enough of waiting. I want to see your manager right now, Tartarus asked the angels with a firm voice. The male heavenly messenger, attempting to diffuse the circumstance, argued, please, sir, your request is being processed right now. I have ruled ten worlds. A normal person could never hurt me. It never happened, Tartarus affirmed strongly. I would like it taken out of the records. He ordered with authority. Make it disappear immediately, refusing to accept any sign of vulnerability in his history of conquests. Noticing Tartarus raising free for all, Breeze murmured to himself. What on earth would he say he is doing? Zephyr's world was one of ten destroyed by Tartarus, the powerful god of destruction. His desire is to demolish however many universes as could be allowed, made sense of Mercedes. He has won every battle he has fought without losing a single one. She emphasized how significant Zephyr's unprecedented accomplishment was. That flawless record was shattered by Zephyr. Do you realize how much of a blow that was to his enormous pride? Realizing Tartarus' ulterior motive for wanting to bring Zephyr back, Zephyr silently considered that insignificant child of a... He smoldered deep down. He believes a rematch should re-establish his perfect record. Zephyr was then asked, What do you say, Zephyr? By the angel. Zephyr responded, Are you kidding me? With a wry smile, I'll gladly oblige and put an end to him if he's so eager for defeat. Zephyr's return to the past was initiated by the angel. He would be shipped to an irregular second previously, however furnished with the strength he required. In addition, as a token of their support, the gods promised him some advantageous advantages. He could use these gifts as soon as he went back in time, allowing him to change the course of history. I detest that it's coming from those repugnant gods, but an opportunity is an opportunity. Zephyr pondered introspectively as his determination solidified. This is my chance to exact my revenge. Not only against Tartarus, but also against all those gods who thought we were insignificant, he resolved internally. The directions have been set. The process is finished. I'm just waiting on the gods' final approval to manipulate space-time. Best of luck, Breeze. Mercedes said, I trust you'll deliver a spectacle for us as he opened the gate to begin his time travel. Hello, he's not relaxing. One member of the group was worried. Crap, we're in deep trouble now. Man, quiet down. Hello, awaken. Please, new guy, wake up. Zephyr's head was sprayed with water by another individual. He did indeed open his eyes. It couldn't be any more obvious. I let you know he wasn't dead, 
declared a striking man. What? Who are these people? Zephyr thought to himself as he struggled with his confusion. They appear to be recognizable. He suddenly remembered something. Oh, this brand, I recollect now. He laughed in acknowledgement. He realized what was going on. He had been transported back 10 years to when he was 20 by the gods. The group began to be curious. What is transpiring there? asked the leader of the team. A blondie man, bearing a cross-formed scar all over, interposed. Nothing, sir. He warned Zephyr. Hey, punk, if you try anything like that again, you're dead, as they locked eyes. Zephyr replied, unperturbed. Whatever, and turned away, provoking the blonde man. What on earth did you say? Another member, who urged them to return to work, restrained the blonde man from reacting. The child expressed his gratitude, saying, Thanks, mister, for protecting me. Zephyr, on the other hand, was unfamiliar with the child. He reasoned that certain details had vanished from his memory over the past ten years. He thought to himself, readjustment will be difficult. Zephyr thought about his new skills. He remembered, recalling the angel's instructions, that he only needed to say, unlock perks, whenever he wanted to activate his benefits. Zephyr took advantage of the opportunity to hide behind a large rock, away from the busy miners. He whispered, unlock perks, when the coast was clear and no one was looking at him. He was surrounded by a golden aura, and as he marveled at the blessings bestowed upon him by the gods, he grinned. Did you see the new guy? Asked Chapter 2, the blonde miner remarked admiringly. He's something else. He works extremely effectively. Keep thinking about whether he's had insight in mining previously, considered the subsequent excavator, watching Breeze quick digging. Breeze worked perseveringly, mining packs loaded with coal, dazzling everyone around him. Damn, because of him, we can't afford to slack off either, the second miner remarked, while the first miner expressed a desire to join Zephyr's team. Zephyr couldn't believe what was going on amid the bustle. Wow, is this true? He murmured, still processing the bizarre nature of the situation. A second prior, he murmured open advantages. That's a lot of information all at once, Zephyr exclaimed, confused by the plethora of super high level skills and items at his disposal at once. A portion of these abilities are totally new to me, he commented, flabbergasted. He grinned and said, I can't believe the gods granted me all this. In any case, his party was interfered with by the top of the mining group. How are you? I advised you to return to your spot. Do you believe that just because it is your first day, I will be gentle with you? The miners were reprimanded by the team leader, who barked. You lazy people never pay attention, even when politely asked. This will instruct you. He yelled and whipped Zephyr with his whip. Zephyr grabbed the whip with his own hands, shocking the man to no end, surprising everyone. With only his bare hands, how did he catch the whip? The man heaved in dismay. Sir, I'm sorry. Zephyr bowed respectfully and apologized. I'll get back to work. The man was completely taken aback by Zephyr's response as he walked away, glancing at his own hand. I possess considerable combat experience, so catching his sluggish whip was a breeze, Zephyr thought to himself. However, I am amazed that it did not even scratch me. Perk 1. The Iron Fortress skill significantly increases durability. The user is resilient and resists fatigue without easily falling victim to damage below their durability threshold. I feel no weakness by any means. Zephyr thought to himself, confident that he could continue this forever. This ability may appear to be a little tricky to use, but if used correctly, it could be extremely beneficial. Not a terrible beginning for his debut perk. He anticipated that combining these nine benefits with his future knowledge would speed up his return to his previous capabilities. For the time being, hard work was most important. By day's end, Zephyr had successfully mined 20 bags of coal. Let's tally up today's yield. Here are the rankings, announced the manager. Team F takes the lead, announced the results. The young boy expressed his astonishment, exclaiming, Wow, sweet, Zephyr, surprised to learn the kid was on his team, glanced at the amazed boy. Team B secures second place, the announcement continued. The blonde man, who Zephyr had encountered earlier, eyed him with disdain. What? 
How on earth did those guys come in first? He questioned incredulously. Team H claims the third spot. The results continued, and finally, Teeny finishes in last place.